Hey everybody, welcome back to the drip irrigation video tutorial series brought to you guys by the Long Beach Water Department and the Smart Irrigation Program. Again, my name is Dominic Masiello with DP Environments and founder of BudgetPlants.com and we're talking more about drip irrigation systems and their components and we're going to help you guys kind of decide which system is going to be best to suit your needs. There are a lot of irrigation systems out there and I know it can get a little bit overwhelming. You go to the store, you see all these different components and it's like, oh my gosh, which one do I pick? So we're gonna give you three basic systems here that are the most popular. Now, before we go on, I wanna take a second and tell you guys about two other components that are necessary for all drip systems. The first item here is an anti-siphon valve. Basically, this just turns your system on and off. You can get an automatic or manual valve. To get an automatic valve, you have to have a timer with it. The second component I want to tell you about is this guy right here. This is a pressure reducer and filter combination. It reduces water pressure, or PSI. The reason for this is because drip systems operate at a much lower pressure than a normal spray head system. And it also has a filter in it that helps catch any sediment that's in the line because drip lines are very tiny, and so any tiny little piece of sand can clog it, and this filter helps stop it. Okay, let's take a closer look at this drip tube here. So this is a flexible half-inch line that you can buy in rolls, and keep in mind it does not come pre-assembled like this. This is just to give you guys an idea of how it's connected. This is a common drip line that has built-in emitters every 12 inches. And what this does is it gets laid evenly in a grid-like pattern along the entire surface area of your garden space. And now if it's spaced evenly, as the emitters are every 12 inches, it's gonna provide a very even saturation to the garden, which is exactly what we want. Now this is about a half inch drip tube. You can see that it's, it's pretty rigid and it does flex though, so you can get really nice serpentine type lines if you have a kind of a curvilinear planting area, or it stays pretty straight if you have straight lines in your garden. It's actually very easy to put together. It uses these little plastic couplings right here, and you just push the tube on both sides and it compression fits. There's no glue or drilling or anything. It's actually really, really simple. This happens to be a coupling but they also have T's and elbows too, to really make a nice tight fit for your landscape area. Now, when you do lay this down, it sits on the surface of your soil. So that means you have to secure it down because motion of the water running through the pipes makes it want to jiggle a little bit. So what you got to do is use these little galvanized ground stakes to secure it to the soil. And what you do is just put it right over the drip tube like that, hammer it down with a mallet, and then you're staked down and secure. Easy as that. The next system I wanna to talk to you guys about is a variation of the first one. It kind of simplifies it a little bit by using a lot less material. We talked about in the first system using kind of a grid-like pattern with your drip tube. Now, in this second system, you're using more of just a main trunk line with the drip tube and then coming off with individual little drip emitters for each plant. So rather than blanketing the entire thing with an even saturation, you're really just delivering the water to each individual plant as needed. We use the same type of drip tube here, except the only difference is it doesn't have the built-in emitters. It's just a blank tube. And what you do is use these guys right here. Now this is called a point source emitter, meaning that it delivers water to a specific point. Now what you do, you use a little punch tool like this to do just that, punch in to your blank tube, and then you put your point source emitter that fits right into that hole that you just made and plug it in. And that sits right by the root ball of your plant. Now, if for some reason you need an extension off the main tube, you can use this smaller quarter inch plastic tube, which then fits into your drip emitter. So it just acts as a little bit of an extension piece if you have a plant that's a little bit further away than your main tube. Now, once you have your extension in place, your drip emitter compression fits right on the end of the tube. There's no need to punch any lines into the smaller quarter inch tube. Now, as you can see here, you can cut the quarter inch tube to whatever extension size you need. So just to recap with a point source system, 
it saves a lot of money in material and a lot of labor in putting it all together. Finally, the third system I wanna to talk to you guys about is a retrofit of your existing spray head system. So for those of you that have a system already in place with pop-up sprinklers, this might be your best bet. It's very simple and it's very, very cost effective because it uses very little materials. And it's a pretty much a no-brainer to install. The very first thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you retrofit your system is take off all your old sprinkler heads like this and then throw them in the recycle bin because you're not gonna need them anymore. Then you're gonna get one of these guys right here. And what this is, this is a drip hub. And this allows you to plug in multiple extensions like this to go to each of your plants. And it's so simple, it's gonna screw right back on to where you took off your old head. Simply screw it on, cut whatever extension lengths you need to go to each of your individual plants, and then plug it in to your drip hub. And now you have the end of the line right there. You're gonna take the drip emitter, the point source emitter that we learned about, and you're gonna plug that right into the end, just like that, and that is what's gonna feed your plant. So now that we've discussed the three basic drip irrigation systems, that just about wraps us up for video two. Video three, we show you basic maintenance as well as troubleshooting tips. See you there.